Hi, my name is Cesar Saavedra, Technical Marketing Manager with GitLab. In this demo, I'd like to take you on what a typical flow would be like for a developer using GitLab. I will be using Amazon EKS as a deployment environment. We have a lot of material, so let's get started. So as a developer, I track my work uh, via boards. Here you can see my three boards, open to do and doing. And uh, let's, uh, let's say that there's an application already in production. And uh, it's right here, this is a web app. And as you can see, the, um, it says spring is here and the background is green. And let's assume that someone um, would like to make that more customizable. So uh, there's a request that will be created by someone. Uh, it could be created from the issues uh, screen right here, or simply they can just come to my to-do uh, board and enter customize web app landing page and create and then submit issue. This will create the issue under my to do board. Notice that the label has been assigned automatically. And uh, uh, I will see this obviously appear on my board. And then uh, I'm going to start working on it. So I'll go ahead and assign it to myself. And then I'll move it to the my doing board. Now at this point, I can actually uh, open the issue. And uh, the issue uh, is what the problem is. And uh, the MR or merge request is the center of changes of the work that I'm doing and the place where stakeholders uh, collaborate on the resolution of the issue. So here I'm going to say create merge request. Then since I'm starting to work on this, uh, I will go ahead and open web IDE and navigate to where the source file is and let's just say i want to change the background color and i'm going to say aws also i know that there is a unit test in in this project that will test uh, the color of the screen and the string that is being returned actually it's going to test what's being returned as the call to that web app so i have to make the changes here too so i'm going to commit and i'm going to commit to the to the branch now, if we go back to the MR, now notice here that in the, in the MR, you can actually click on changes and see side by side the changes that took place in the files of that project that I applied in this case. This is how the stakeholders on this MR can collaborate down to the source code line changes and say, you know, looks good to me or something like that. For now, I'm not gonna put a comment in there, but you know, you can, you can uh, collaborate all the way down to a single source uh, source line, uh, and and this is good because you know through this collaboration, um, what you get is uh, uh, you get uh, better uh, better code quality. It also speeds up uh, the development of features and also increases developer productivity. This next screen, which is the pipeline, so a pipeline has been uh, started as a result of committing the changes to the newly created branch. Uh, since this pipeline will take a few minutes to complete, instead of waiting, uh, I already have the same pipeline already completed. So uh, let's go see it. Here is the pipeline. It's already been uh, run all the way to uh, the end. And uh, this pipeline is part of our auto DevOps uh, pipeline, which comes out of the box and is based on lessons learned and best practices for continuous integration and continuous uh, delivery. Uh, these pipelines can jumpstart uh, your development work, saving you time and shortening your, your development life cycle. As you can see, they also shift work left as much as possible so that you can identify and fix problems and preempt issues from occurring in production. However, if these pipelines don't, don't quite fit your needs, uh, you can create your own pipeline or modify an existing one. Uh, this specific pipeline includes a, uh, the review app which is right here. And this uh, spins up uh, its own uh, environment, in this case in the EKS cluster, you know, so that updates can be validated by the stakeholders of this MR. So let's briefly now go over each of the jobs included in this pipeline. We'll start with a build stage and also the job, uh, which creates a build of the application using an existing uh, Docker file. Uh, the resulting Docker file image is pushed to the container registry and tagged uh, with a commit SHA or tag. Then in the test stage, you have a, a, a few jobs here. Uh, in general, test uh, analyzes your project to detect a language and framework um, that is written in 
or implement it in and then it runs the appropriate test for your application. It will also use the test you already have in your application. In this case, it will run that single unit test that I showed you earlier. And if there are no tests, uh, it's up to you to add them. Code quality, it runs uh, static analysis and other code checks uh, on the current code. It creates a report, which is then uploaded as an artifact that you can later download and check out. Container scanning is a vulnerability static analysis for containers to check for potential security, security issues on Docker images. Gymnasium Maven dependency scanning uh, runs an analysis on the project dependencies and checks for potential security issues. License scanning searches the project dependencies for their license and checks them for compliance in your project. Secret SAS scans the content uh, of the repository to find API keys and other information that should not be there. Another area related to secrets is the ability to mask uh, protect variables. Uh, GitLab uh, provides this capability uh, via our CICD variable settings, uh, which I will show you in a minute. Spotbugs uh, SAS, which is also part of our static uh, application security testing uh, suite. Uh, it runs a static analysis on the current code and checks for potential security issues, for example, buffer overflow. The review uh, app, um, it actually creates, like I mentioned before, a container and deploys the application on EKS. And um, uh, the stakeholders actually at this point can review updates to the app before it gets merged into uh, the main branch, improving the fidelity of the solution that will eventually get deployed to production. So at this point, I'd like to show you the way to protect variables, sensitive information. So for example, in this case, uh, you can see some variables in this project uh, related to um, you know, AWS access key and for example, uh, ECS service and task definitions, etc. But if you, if you uh, were to change this, you would just click on these um, checkboxes. And obviously masking is useful uh, so that you don't show the actual value in any of the jobs uh, or output that is generated uh, from running the jobs. Uh, so the ability to protect and mask uh, these variables uh, shields organizations uh, from potential uh, security issues. So let's go back to where we were here and let's continue uh, going over uh, right here to the next stage uh, is DAST, and that's our uh, dynamic uh, application security testing uh, capabilities. The DAST analyzes the current code and checks for potential security issues, for example, uh, you know, cross-site scripting. And then the performance measures the performance of a web page. It creates a JSON report as well, uh, including the overall performance score for each of the pages, uh, and it uploads this report uh, as an artifact. So let's go back to the MR here. One thing I like to bring up to your attention is that uh, this MR is related to the issue that, um, that created it. And, uh, and when the MR is completed, it will also close the issue. So as the jobs run, uh, data is generated and art and reports are generated that are, that are uploaded as artifacts. You can uh, click on the full report if you want to get more in-depth information about that specific uh, report. And then in here, you can, you know, in this specific case, it's showing you the different types of uh, uh, security uh, issues that it found. And you can actually dismiss the vulnerability. Uh, you can create an issue uh, or you can get, get more information about uh, that specific vulnerability. This specific MR has been, uh, is, the pipeline ran already, and now we are ready to, is waiting to be merged. Uh, and the assumption here is the stakeholders have had a chance also to, to run the, um, the review environment. So the review environment is actually a running environment that has all the updates applied to it. And it's the, the point uh, or an environment uh, that the, st the stakeholders can use to check that all the changes that were made are correct. Let's merge the, the, um, the MR. Now notice that the merge button here is not, um, is not uh, available. It's grayed out. And the reason is that um, this MR has been marked in draft mode, okay? So this is something that uh, is built in uh, within GitLab. And uh, it's an extra safety mechanism to prevent uh, an accidental merge. 
uh, and to indicate also that this uh, is still being worked on. So first, um, we need to clear draft mode by clicking on the Mark as Ready button. And now the prefix draft in the MR title will be gone. And now the merge button is activated. Also, you will see that there is a delete source, source branch check mark here that is checked. Uh, th what we'll, this will do is it will clean up all the resources used by the review app, including the EKS container that was spun up. This actually helps uh, with container sprawl. Let's merge. And this merge is going to kick off another pipeline that will run all the checks that you saw earlier, and it'll take the deployment to a staging environment that will also be running on EKS. Well, at this point, this is going to take a few minutes. So let's go to an MR that has already completed. So this is the exact same MR that is executed on the other project, but it's already completed. Notice here that uh, you know the changes uh, were merged into master and the source branch has been deleted and the issue has been closed. So let's go to the pipeline. Now notice here now that this is showing some uh, jobs here that were not there before. And this is basically the continuous delivery portion of the pipeline. Uh, you can see here that there is uh, a staging environment. So again, like I mentioned before, once the uh, updates have been merged, an environment is spun up uh, on EKS. And uh, this is called the staging environment. And at this point, uh, you don't see it in this case, but these are manual steps. So th these will be grayed out. These actually were gray grayed out. And you have to manually click on these to do an incremental rollout. Uh, you can choose 10, 25, 50, or 100%. An incremental rollout into production uh, reduces the risk and contributes, uh, contributes to a better user experience uh, and reduces uh, the danger of an outage. And after the uh, application has been rolled out to production into the production environment, another performance test is run um, in production. So let's go back uh, to the completed merged MR. And I wanna click on production here. This is showing the production environment. Uh, this, is, this list is actually an auditable sequence of changes that have been applied to the production environment. This is the last one that was run. The nice thing about this auditable sequence of changes is that at any point in time, if you introduce a change and you notice that this is showing an unexpected behavior in production, you can always roll back the environment by clicking on this on this button right here, the rollback environment, which will take you back um, to a previous a previous known state. At this point, you can uh, click on uh, view deployments. And this is actually the application running in production. As you notice, it has a new, the new color that we applied orange and it has the AWS prefix. So the two changes that we introduced, introduced into production. The other thing I wanted to show you was the monitoring. We have Prometheus running on the EKS cluster, collecting, collecting metrics. And this is showing you metrics, uh, not just for the cluster, but also for the running application here. Let's redeploy this environment. And then let's go back to the monitoring window. The, the rockets that you see here are actually um, a change that was just rolled out to production. And it's uh, you can actually see the job itself that executed as a result of that, uh, that update to production. And the nice thing about these indicators is that um, they can help you troubleshoot production issues because there is a correlation between the behavior of, for example, total memory here and the introduction of, the, of that change. So these demos so far have used uh, EKS and ECS as a deployment platforms. However, you can also use uh, GitLab with bare metal and virtualized deployment environments as well as different operating systems uh, like Windows. All right, so to wrap up, uh, we have gone over uh, how GitLab can help organizations speed up their software development and delivery. Uh, we discussed uh, auto DevOps and how it can get you started quickly with pipelines that are germane to your project language and deployment environment, whether it is EKS, ECS, bare metal, virtualized environments, or even Windows. Thank you for watching.